So I had a fantastic week last week. I had a lot of really nice stuff that sold, including a couple higher dollar items that have been sitting on my shelf for a while. So I really can't complain. Things went really well last week. Although I have one complaint. I picked up a cold. It was lovingly given to me by my kids. They uh, thank you very much. And uh, I've been kind of fighting with that for the last couple of days, but I think I'm through the worst of it and hoping it won't affect my week too much going forth. In other news, I picked up a new camera. I have the Canon G7X Mark II, and I'm planning on using that for some future video projects coming up. And as soon as I kind of get used to using it and learn the ins and outs, I'm hoping to do a video review on that. So that's about it for me. I've exhausted my tissue supply in the barn here and I'm going to go in the house and see if I can find some more. Enjoy the video. There's a lot of ceramic pieces that are marked Delft, but there's only one Royal Delft. And this is, here is a piece of Royal Delft. This is the mark that you want to be looking for. This little kind of a jug with a J or an F underneath it. And then this letter right here is the date code. So this is a W which correlates to 1901. So this is a piece of Royal Delft 1901. The only problem with it is it's got this chip here. So I couldn't list it for as much as I should be able to get for it. I put it up for $80, which is a bit of a reach for this piece. And I got a best offer of 50. And I bought this at a walk around auction. It was just on the table and I recognized the symbol. And I paid $2 for it. This is a vintage package of glass slow blowing fuses. There's five in here. And a few years back, I bought this electronics lot auction of vintage electronic components. And there's probably about 60 to 100 packages of these, all different makes and models. And I've been just kind of slowly putting them up in quantity and seeing if I could sell them individually, selling them in lots. So this one here sold for five bucks. So not a huge amount of money, but I have a lot of them. They're easy to list, they're easy to ship, and they're easy to store. So. I'll get through them eventually. This is a rustic wood and iron block and tackle. It's got a double pulley, nice kind of aged wood to it. It's quite heavy. And this here I got at a walk around auction. I paid $2 for it and this just sold for $30. And it's been in my store for quite a while. It's got some watchers, but never sold. And I think the reason being is the shipping on it because this weighs probably about five pounds. The shipping on it is kind of prohibitive. The shipping is about half the price of the item, maybe even more, depending on how far away I have to ship it. So it took a little while to sell, but uh, glad to get it off the shelf. So in last week's video, I sold a bobbin and shuttle. It was in a little wooden tube. It's a little metal thing. And that came out of this piece right here. This is a boy sewing machine needle and bobbin kind of organizer piece. It's for, this would have been in a country store and you would have kind of dialed in the number that you were looking for slide this little door and there's all the needles that correspond to those numbers. This is full of needles and these little wooden tubes. I took the bobbins and sold them because there was a little bit of money in those. I was able to sell them for about 20 bucks a piece. I still have a bunch of them. And I've just been waiting for this piece here to sell. And I put it up for $290 and somebody made me an offer of $270. And that was a great, great strong offer. I accepted right away. And this piece here I got at a walk around auction. I paid $60, which I knew was a little bit high for me, but I knew I could get about $250 to $300 for this piece. The only challenge with this piece here is going to be shipping it, I think. It's kind of a, an odd shape. It's pretty wide. It's about 16 inches across. And I'm not really sure if these are going to make a big mess when it gets jostled around in shipping. So I, I kind of got to figure this out and uh, kind of choose the best way to package this up. This is a vintage green carnival glass bottle. It's got that carnival glass kind of iridescence going on on it. And it's got a uh, image of Franklin Delano Roosevelt on the front and a we have nothing to fear but fear itself quote on the back. And it's just a really ugly bottle. I mean, who would want this? But anyways, somebody did. They paid 10 bucks for it. I saw these selling online for about five. I really didn't want to go that low. So I put a $10 price tag on it and someone came in and bought it. So I received this bottle along with another one that's kind of similar, but in purple glass and it's got Eisenhower on it instead. Equally just as ugly as this one. And I received both those bottles for nothing. So no cost on these. The other one's still listed for $10 online. 
This is a vintage Kern Swiss made drafting set. It's got a neat little closure here. You pull this little rod out and it will open. And I think this was complete. I I really didn't see anything that was missing in it. So I sold it as as it is. And I put a price of I think $50 on this. Just took a best offer right now. It's been up for probably close to a year. And I took a best offer of $25 for it. Got this on a tray lot of just totally random stuff. There was this, a fish knife, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I know I've sold through most of that. And I paid, it was a really weird price. It was like $7.50 for it. This is a lot of vintage metalized Mylar capacitors. And these came in that large electronics, vintage electronics component lot that I bought about three years ago. And I just put these up as lots of four, I believe it was, for six bucks. And somebody just came in and bought all three lots that I had. So they paid $18 for all these. This is a big hunk of iron pyrite, weighs about a pound, also known as fool's gold. And I got this at a walk around auction. I bought a large, uh, rock collection. It had a bunch of quartz, amethyst, and a few pieces of this. So far I've only sold the iron pyrite out of that and I have a bunch more of the amethyst I need to list. I think I paid about $40 for the collection and I think there's probably about 30 to 40 different specimens in there. This one here as well as the other one, I've sold two of these so far, sold for 20 bucks. This is a pair of brass wall sconce candle holders. I didn't really know what to call these. I've seen this style of figural people before. It's kind of an antique style, so I just called them uh, colonial man and woman. And they're pretty well done. I don't think these are original pieces. I believe these are reproduction. But they're, they, they have a real handmade quality to them. They look like they really were cast. They're considerably heavy. And these I put up for $189 for the pair. I bought them at a walk around auction. I think I maybe paid five or 10 bucks for these just as they were. I didn't get these in a box lot. And I got a best offer of $140, which I accepted. So funny thing about these is I was just about to lower the price down to about a hundred bucks on these. I originally listed them for 189 and they've been up for about a year. And I was having some second thoughts about that price and I was gonna put them on sale just to see if they would sell. I've had no offers or interest in these. And um, about two days after I was thinking about lowering the price, somebody came in and bought them. So I, I'm glad I procrastinated and didn't actually lower the price. So my last four sun catchers sold. These are pressed glass sun catchers. They're beautiful pieces. And I bought these in a tray lot at an auction. There was three trays full of these and I got about 48 of them and I paid 50 bucks. And I've been selling these since February and I sell them for about $12.95 to $30 something dollars. These ones here are all smaller, so these all went for $12.95. So somebody came in and bought these and they bought them one at a time and paid shipping individually for each one. And they paid international shipping, so they paid about $13.50 for each one. I'm going to package these up, figure out how much they weigh, and then give them a refund for the balance on the shipping. But these are my last four. I don't have any more after this. And I'd have to estimate that I probably made about $650 in profit on that tray lot of 50 bucks. So that retail camera store auction that I went to in January continues to pay off. Here's another Canon sale. I've sold through most of my stuff from that I purchased from that, but I still got kind of some obscure pieces. And this is one of them, just a, uh, just kind of an old style camera flash distributor hub or something. Probably obscure and hard to find. And this one here sold for 13, I'm oh, sorry, 19.95 and is going off to Australia. And uh, I, every time I sell a piece from this lot now, I wish I had purchased more and went a little bit deeper on the stuff because the stuff's really sold. I barely paid anything for it and the stuff just continues to sell and sell and sell. And I'm getting down to the end of it now and I'm gonna miss these little sales because they, they definitely have added up to a lot. This is a reproduction United States Marshall badge. At least I hope it's reproduction. I don't think it's a genuine one. And this just came in a jewelry lot that I probably paid about 20 bucks for. It was just one of the random things floating around in the, in the box of jewelry. And this piece here sold for 15 bucks. This is an old antiquarian book. It's a Tom Brown School Days, the Arlington edition. No copyright in this, but I, I put it up as late 1800s because I purchased this in a book lot 
of books that pre pretty much all from that period, about 1870 to 1890s. And uh, it's an interesting, interesting edition. The thing I like about this copy is it has this uh, grand piano advertisement in the back, which is just, just kind of cool. It says here 1876, so that kind of uh, 1881, 1882, so that kind of validates the, uh, the uh, date that I put on this book. This book here sold for $19.95, and I don't sell a ton of books online. If I see some interesting, obscure books, I often will buy them at auction if I can get them for a good price. I find books are a bit of a slow seller. You just kind of put them up and wait, 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 and they just kind of fill in the gaps in sales over time for me, and you know, usually selling them between $20 and you know, $80 or so for these old, antique books.
Oh!